Leona Boyd from uh, an album, which is a collection of called 20th Century Masters, the Millennium Collection, and uh, that has uh, Plaisir d'Amour and Cavatina, the theme uh, from Deer Hunter. Leona Boyd is in town to uh, play at the Lyric Theatre tonight uh, at Assiniboine Park uh, with guitarist Michael Savona and a Winnipeg choir as well. A little about uh, Leona Boyd. Um, she is a legendary Canadian guitarist, actually born in England and moved to Canada at a young age. And since 1975, when she made her Carnegie Hall debut, uh, she's been called the first lady of the guitar. She's had concerts around the world, television specials, 27 recordings, uh, five honorary doctorates, uh, Order of Canada, uh, D- uh, Diamond Jubilee Medal as well, and uh, winner of uh, Guitar Player Magazine's Best Classical Guitarist poll uh, five times and she was inducted into their gallery of great artists. She's one of the uh, Canadian treasures of our, our musical language here, and uh, she is live in the studio this morning. Good morning, Leona. Good morning, Michael. Wow. It's Thank a, you for that nice introduction. Well, you know, I, I, I could have gone on and on, but uh, I'd rather <laughs> just chat with you for <laughs> a little you. while because there's so many accolades, and you've had uh, such an amazing career so far. Welcome to... Yes, uh, I have. I've been very blessed. Music's taken me everywhere around the world and mm-hmm. given me so many gifts. Well, we're honored to have you in our studio with us this morning and uh, very excited about your concert tonight. It's been uh, a long time since I've been in Winnipeg. How many years has it been? Oh, I, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's. <laughs> I, think, I was always coming here. I, I, I think I wrote... Uh, if only love here years ago and used to brave the winds at Portage in Maine and then go driving to Brandon. I remember once ending up in the ditch in the middle of the <laughs> night in Brandon. Fond memories. Oh, yes, fond memories. <laughs> of Winnipeg it was ditches. the winter when I came here. <laughs> well, welcome to the summer. It's a beautiful morning here. Um, Thank you. you. You know, you've had a it's been a long career so far, many years of performing. Before we start talking about um, about you know where you're at now and where you've mm-hmm. been the last number of years, um, I, I'm kind of curious. I, I want to know. I know that neither of your parents were musicians. What, when you were growing up, what kind of music were you listening to around the house? What kind of music did you hear? Well, they had the BBC on. I grew up in England, um, and they took me occasionally to classical concerts. But I played the recorder as a child, um, but just the, the usual fare of the day, I suppose. They weren't classical music fanatics, although they did listen to a lot on the was it BBC Two, I think, mm-hmm. and. Um, And the thing that really determined my life's course is that my mother insisted my father bring back from Spain, because he was born in Spain, uh, this very inexpensive Spanish guitar (laughs) that hung on the wall for quite a few years when we went backwards and forwards between England and Canada. That really changed uh, my life. But my parents were very um, creative. They were artists, so there was always... uh, art around, Mm -hmm. and they encouraged me to write. Since I was five, I was writing little poems, and in fact, I won, in infant school, I won the best story. I still have a little (laughs) picture book they gave me as a a prize. (laughs) So I I loved words, and it's uh, sort of like destiny completing itself now that I've become a singer-songwriter, because words and music were all sort of equally important to me, Mm -hmm. Um, and mine were always little poems or stories that we get in the yearbooks throughout my whole uh, education. Um, but when we came to Canada, uh, uh, my parents had, you know, they missed England and they went back and then I thought, well, maybe Canada's not so bad. <laughs> came back again to Toronto. Um, and when I got into the faculty of music many years later, I, I just was never thinking I'd become a professional musician. It was a hobby. I just fell in love with the guitar. Everything about it, I loved the the sound of it, the feel of it, the smell of the woods. I loved particularly Spanish music. You know, I recorded a lot of Spanish repertoire. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just because I was in Spain a lot as a kid. It's in your blood, too. uh, But I've also (laughs) written like a Baroque concerto. Sadly, I never recorded that. Um, And worked with a lot of other composers to expand the guitar repertoire. Mm -hmm. Um, And and now it's a whole kind of different... uh, uh, career, but boy, did I have a good run at it with when I was signed to CBS Masterworks and was one of very few recording artists, you know, just a handful of us. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, it's wide open with, <laughs> um, you can still see some of my old videos and things on YouTube, a lot of them actually. Um, and I've seen them. Yeah, some embarrassing, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the way it is. So you started playing the guitar, and you were fortunate enough to have studied with some pretty amazing yes. uh, uh, guitarists as well. How did you come come by perf- uh, learning, uh, taking lessons with uh, you know Segovia, Segovia and La Goya, yes. and how did and how, how did well, that happen? It's because Toronto was a, a hub for uh, classical guitar. Ellie Kastner 
Um, poor man is sort of at the end of his life now. I, I, I owe him a visit. He's really struggling. He's in the hospital. Um, he started the Toronto Guitar Society, and it was a very vibrant scene that you know expanded, and they brought in different performers, guitarists from Alirio Diaz, Narciso Yepes, Segovia, and every time these guitarists would come, I guess I was his prized student, so I got to perform <laughs> for them. Amazing. Huh? And then develop friendships, like with Lagoya, and then I went to study with Lagoya in Quebec, and then he invited me to come to Paris, so I spent two years uh, working with him in mm-hmm. Paris, and he was a wonderful teacher. Learned French in the meantime, which was great. So I'm fluent in that, and I think here there's a, quite a, a a large French francophone community, isn't there? Just just over, actually, they were on the si- right side of the bridge. This is sort of oh, the French really? side of town oh, now. Wonderful. Once you cross over that yeah, bridge, I was yeah. watching the TV when they came in yesterday. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. Winnipeg is very uh, francophone, and there's a very rich Jewish community here, which is, you know, uh, you you have Winnipeg has spawned so many mm-hmm. writers and artists and musicians. So um, I'm very aware of that. And I hope people will come tonight. It's uh, you know it's not purely classical, but I will do some classical mm-hmm. and some duos with Michael. We, we sing together and we play together, but we have some instrumental treats yeah, too. Yeah, we're going to definitely talk about uh, where your career is at now because yes. I think that's very important. But um, I, what was it like, you know, when when you were um, when you were first starting touring the world, touring mm-hmm. as a solo artist, to sort of yes. as, as, as a young woman out there playing guitar, touring the world. Probably, you know, lots on your own. What, oh, what were almost the, always. What on were my the own. challenges? I mean, because well, you were you were a pioneer back then. I was in a very sense. adventurous. I mean, I'd be playing in railway stations, practicing, <laughs> taking buses and trains and ferries and hovercrafts, and basically just traveling all over the world. I was with Columbia Artist Management in New York. Um, at the beginning, I was just doing little towns, little guitar societies. Then I worked as the opening act for Gordon Lightfoot, which that was a whole different scene, Learjets and uh, what have you, um, playing in huge stadiums every night. Um, but I still like to do the little towns. In fact, there's a, a song on my album, The Return to Canada with Love, that's dedicated to all the little towns I played. I mean, I played The Pa and Snow Lake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember it was snowing in September. <laughs> um, but all the small communities across... Well, not just Canada, North America too. And I'd hire my own plane sometimes to get places. Remember, I once hired a Learjet. God, was it expensive <laughs> uh, to get to New Orleans because it's the only way I could fit into the schedule. I think basically, Michael, I just didn't sleep. <laughs> yeah, it seems <laughs> I, that way. <laughs> I look at what I was doing in 77, 78. Plus, as you know, I was dating the prime minister for eight years. So I don't know how I did all that. I honestly don't. I think I didn't sleep much. <laughs> <laughs> but you had a fun time. And I was writing music, yes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting. I had four years of training at the University of Toronto, but they really didn't train us to be composers. And uh, and it's just something that I loved doing. You know, once I started writing my original music, it became very important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I continue to do that, of course, now. Um, and I think people really appreciate it. I remember once a, a native uh, young fellow came and he took a medallion from around his neck. And because I'd written this song, um, um, was it My Land of Hiawatha, Spirit of the Northern Waters? Sp- no, sorry, Spirit of the. West Wind, Spirit of the Water, and Spirit of the Forest, I think it was. It was like a trilogy. And uh, he said, on behalf of the Native peoples of Canada, I want to present this to you because I've never heard a classical guitarist uh, describe Canada so well, and your performance just really knocked me out. And I thought, oh, that is so amazing. Because even back then, I wanted to do something Canadian, and Mm -hmm. I performed that piece, those three pieces around the world at all kinds of festivals. So I was an unofficial musical ambassador. (laughs) And still uh, are, in a sense, I mean. Yeah, still. I'm not doing as much internationally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I cut down, I'm in the middle of a little summer tour uh, here. And I'm delighted, actually, Winnipeg was the inspiration for the tour because I got this booking mm-hmm. uh, well over a year ago. And I thought, I can't just have one concert all by itself. So I had a promoter book the Ontario tour that we've just been doing. Um, but I love performing. I wouldn't want to be on the road all the time. Um, and I like the writing process a lot too, and the recording process. It's all so different. Um, so yes, I've got a lot of albums and been very privileged to meet all kinds of people you know, from all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel very blessed. Uh, now it's, it's uh, I hope tonight we'll get a, a good crowd. I hope the rains will not come. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have played in crazy thunderstorms. I remember when I did the Lightfoot tours in Tanglewood and lightning flashing and all that, but hopefully it's not going to be like that tonight. I'm talking to uh, Leona Boyd in the studio. She is uh, in town 
to perform at the Lyric Theater tonight. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful night out tonight. Um, Good. <laughs> it's uh, it's free. It's at 7.30 at the Assiniboine Park. Uh, it, it would be crazy not to go. It's going to be a beautiful uh, performance and evening out there. Uh, Leona, you know Is it 7.30 or 8? Uh, right. I'll double check that. Oh, I'll double I'm check that. Sure. I think 8.30. 8.30. Oh, 8.30. Oh, okay. Yes, 8.30 yes. tonight. But people But get there at 7.30 anyway. Have it's going to be nice. I have and a picnic. Drink some wine. And and <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, chill <laughs> out. Make it an event. Make it an evening. Uh-huh. You're, you're, you know, you've, um, uh, you know, I've followed your career for a long time now. When I look at your albums and all the different people you've played with, from Eric Clapton and David Gilmore and, mm-hmm. you know, as you say, touring with Gordon Lightfoot and uh, Latin music, straight ahead classical yeah. music. You've now, and, and you've always been writing You've always been writing music throughout your career, but I guess in the last number of years, it's um, you've let's say you've discovered a voice again. You've discovered your voice again. You've mm-hmm. always I had a voice. I never used to sing. Well, Are you kidding? <laughs> I you used was to the recite one that, poetry. There you go. <laughs> no, but I would lip sync "Happy b- Birthday." <laughs> yeah. well, I did. I, I I recited poetry of uh, Garcia Lorca and Pablo Neruda, which I loved on an album I did called "Whispers of Love." Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful poem. Yeah, that came out a few years back with uh, right, the other good guitar. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used That's to do right. that live too. Mm-hmm. I matched uh, music to poetry. I c- jokingly called it classical rap. <laughs> classical rap. <laughs> 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 a new genre of music. Yes. Um, so, when you when you decided you were going to sing again, what what is the process for that? Did you just Start singing your own music, oh, or did no, you start a practicing? Whole story. No, did no, you? No. Let, let's hear. I want to hear a, a bit about that. Was that a desperation? Yeah. No, it, it, it is a whole interesting story. I'm writing the sequel to my book. I developed something called focal dystonia. At first, they thought it was some kind of disease, which it absolutely isn't. So I want to correct that right off the top. It's just a condition that happens when you overplay, when the fingers have played billions of times, especially tremolo, which I was famous for all of, mm-hmm. all over the world. Um, you can get careless. And I used to do my practice sort of on autopilot sometimes. When I was married, I'd be watching TV with my former husband, and I'd be doing you know, mindlessly uh, tremolo exercises or arpeggio exercises, watching the TV and just autopilot, you know, doing these, these routine finger things. Mm-hmm. That's the worst thing. The brain maps can get confused and smudged, as they say, and they change. And we all have these maps in our brain that uh, you know, coordinate with the actual motion, but the fine motor motions required for for classical guitar can easily get confused. And most guitarists just never ever play again. And it devastated the careers of so many people, Leon Fleischer being a good example. He mm-hmm. didn't play for 30 years. Uh, David Leisner is one guitarist who recovered, but he quit totally for 10 years and then started all over again. So when this started to happen, I noticed that my tremolo was not as smooth and then one of the fingers was sort of lifting up in a weird way. And I s- spent about, s- well, about three years trying to figure out what it was. I thought it was a physical thing, that maybe my fingers were growing together. It was just so distressing. You can't, can't imagine. I ended up getting divorced. I, was, I did all kinds of crazy things trying to find answers from hypnotherapy to acupuncture. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, none of that works. They now have discovered that it's people with more plastic brains. In other words, my, that's, that's how you become a virtuoso player because you get it, your brain gets it faster than most other people. So, you know, tremolo, for instance, was natural. I just immediately um, locked onto the idea. My brain got it and the way it went. Um, and all this research now has come out of Germany and one of the world experts, Joaquin uh, Farias, now uh, moved to Toronto. I helped him actually, and people come from all over the world to see him. He was living in uh, Granada, uh, Spain, and he deals with all kinds of dystonias, but specifically musicians, because he had it, mus- he as a pianist had it, and I've, he can just do miracles with, with people, um, and it's, it's a very tricky thing to get over, but anyway, in the meantime, I was struggling not being able to play to the standards that I really wanted, and I just finished a Latin tour, well, my Camino Latino mm-hmm. album had come out, uh, which I had done knowing that I was st- my right hand was not behaving normally, um, and I was able to do that because it was slightly easier, and I had all kinds of guests that did the finger-picking uh, style. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of that tour, I decided to uh, quit until I found an answer, and it took me six years. I played with a pick for a while, which was not satisfying because... The beauty of classical guitar is the, you know, the sound of the nails. And um, anyway, then I gradually, gradually retrained my fingers, and um, it just 
took so much patience and sitting for hours and hours and months and years actually in front of a mirror to retrain my fingers how to do the simple basics. I couldn't play Spanish romance. You know, it was just, mm-hmm. and you know, you know how that must have, um, well, for any classical musician, it's just devastating because you, you are so used to being able to do it naturally. Anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. What, what I decided to do is to add singing, which was a crazy idea. Me, who had been thrown out of a choir when I was seven and told I really, uh, I was growling or something. You know, I'm not a Celine Dion, <laughs> far from it, but I have a nice sort of folky type of folky voice, voice that people seem sure, to yeah. be really enjoying. Mm-hmm. I don't have a really trained voice. Um, and I, I wish now I'd started singing many, many years ago, but I'm a natural storyteller and combining the guitar and and my vocals, and then I have an accompanist. I started with a Croatian uh, man who um, was quite famous from from uh, Dubrovnik, and he was like a Simon and Garfunkel duo what a back voice in the seventies. Yeah, Sergeon mm-hmm. Javoye. So we did we we toured quite a bit. We went to Cuba. We played in a bit in the states, a bit in Canada, and then it became sort of impractical because he and his wife live in New Jersey. Mm. And when I moved to, back to Canada after all the years, twenty years I lived in the U.S. Um, I was wondering how will I ever find a classical guitarist who sings because it's really difficult. Most don't. Most are one or the other. Mm -hmm. But I found Michael Savona who's a guitar teacher and um, in Toronto and uh, he has been traveling with me the last uh, four, no, three and a half years I guess. And uh, he does both just like me. So we've really, really enjoyed the partnership and um, I've been extremely productive. I have a genius of a producer called Peter Bond, who I've worked with on uh, now. This is the fifth album. And um, we did a beautiful album called Seven Journeys, Music for the Soul and the Imagination. Do you know that one? Mm-hmm. And then a really important album that took two years um, uh, called The Return to Canada with Love. Yeah, I want to I play a track from that. Um, do you want to set this one up? Where I've got uh, Spirit right. of the Canadian um, Northlands, Northlands oh, right great. now I want to well, play. Oh, that's what so we're going to open with, That's actually. what you're going to open? Do you want to tell me yes. about this one that you wrote? Sure, they're all, they're all very different on this album. Uh, this is the one that's just instrumental other than a little tiny bit of me speaking at the end. Rapping. But it's, yeah, I, well, <laughs> oh, just, just, I wanted to capture the majesty, the power of the Northlands of Canada. And I, it's always struck me um, kind of sad that Canadian classical musicians haven't really drawn inspiration from their landscape so much. I mean, in Spain, look at Albanets and Defy mm-hmm. and Granada, Granadas. They all uh, sort of dedicated uses the folk music and, and were, took inspiration from the landscapes of Spain, right? Um, Debussy, you, you name it. But in Canada, there really hasn't been that much. I think Oscar Peterson did a suite, Gordon Lightfoot, Canadian of course. Suite, but yeah, there's yeah. not that much. So I uh, wanted to sort of... Um, Try uh, you know it's not purely classical this piece, but I, I think it really does capture the moods of, of the north with the lakes and the rivers and the forests. <laughs> well, let's anyway. take me there. Uh, that's I love nature, so let's have a listen. <laughs> this is uh, Leona Boyd, and this is from her album called "To Return to Canada with Love," uh, and this track is called "Spirit of the Canadian Northland." Stay tuned. More, more with Leona Boyd right after this. <laughs> That's uh, Leona Boyd uh, performing from her album called The Return to Canada. Uh, the Return to Canada with Love, Spirit of the Canadian Northlands. And uh, Leona Boyd is performing tonight, and you're going to hear that uh, probably tonight with uh, Michael Savona and a Winnipeg Choir. She's performing tonight, I'm going to get the time right this time, 8.30 at the uh-huh. Lyric Theatre, but by all means get there an hour early, set up your picnic, your blanket, and enjoy a beautiful evening with Leona Boyd. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to see her play. And... Uh, She's in the studio with me, so I don't want to ignore her. I want to chat with her a little bit more. <laughs> Did Tell you know that uh, Women of Note uh, are performing yes, with me too? Yes, Women of Note. Yes. Thank you. I yes. keep 
cannot remember that. Now I know. <laughs> women of note, the well, Winnipeg it's a, it's Choir. It's a lovely title for uh, musicians, uh, women musicians that sing together because they sing a lot of notes. That's they right. They sing a lot of notes with me tonight. And on this show, on this, you're doing a tour it's starting in Winnipeg and sort of going around to parts of Ontario. No, it's, it's, this it's, is the end. This I is the end I of have it. one more to, to do on Sunday. Sunday. Okay, okay. Yes. So, and you're you're joined by Michael and choirs throughout Different this tour. Choirs, Different yes. choirs, throughout this tour. They're going to sing uh, Canada My Canada, which is a patriotic song I was inspired to write, realizing that Canada, other than O Canada, doesn't really have a patriotic song. No, and most countries do, don't they? <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's a whole long story how that happened, but I won't bore you with it. I t- I'll tell the story tonight, actually, in the okay. concert, how that came to happen. Um, and I have all kinds of people sing with me from Dan Hills, Serena Ryder, Jan Arden, you know, many, many well-known singers, Richard Margerson, uh, singing uh, the, the song. Um, because I thought big, I wanted it to be like Tears Are Not Enough, We Are The mm. World, right? Too mm-hmm. bad I didn't make a video at the same time. But anyway, they, they will be singing the chorus uh, with me, and uh, they also have a few of the pieces of their own. And um, uh, yeah, it's great to have a, a, a choir. I had an all-male choir the other day. It was me with all these guys, wow. <laughs> maybe about 50 men on the stage. It must have been and powerful. Michael, yeah. I was over, uh, overwhelmed <laughs> with men, and then... Uh, but hopefully the sound man, uh, everybody could hear me. And then tonight, Michael Savona is going to be overwhelmed with women because it's all, I tweeted that. Yeah, I do my own tweets. So uh, Yes, I've noticed that. We follow you on Twitter. Oh, do we? Oh, yep. yes. Thank you. Yeah, yep. we're thank active you. here. Tell me a bit more about this album, The, uh, the Return to Canada. Um, what, what prompted it? Well, the I returned return to, to Canada. Canada and you what returned prompted to Canada it, from the States, yeah. I was living in the States for many years, and I saw um, a documentary on Glenn Gould, and I saw him driving up to his cottage in Lake Simcoe, and I suddenly got this huge pang of nostalgia for Canada. And, you know, my marriage had broken up, and I was sort of not quite sure where I wanted to live. I'd gone for a while living in Miami, then I was in Connecticut, and then I went back to live in L.A. I was sort of a gypsy. I guess I always have been. Like the know. flower in your hair and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a flower child. <laughs> so then, and then my father uh, was getting sick. And um, eventually we lost him in 2011. In fact, I'm going to sing a song uh, for him that I wrote for him that's on this album, um, Mm. telling the story of his life. Uh, But I decided to come back to Toronto, and I thought I was just going to write this one song, Canada, My Canada. But then one song led to another, led to another. So I did one song for the Maritimes, one Thank You for Bringing Me Home, mentions the Golden Prairies. Hey. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you made it in there. And then I did one for the Mar- yeah, one Maritimes, one uh, um, autobiographical, one tells all the crazy, ad- well, a few crazy adventures I've had around the world called uh, You Drew Me Back Again. So it's Canada draw- drawing me back again. And I do spend most of the year in Canada. I retreat to my little Spanish-style house in Palm Beach uh, mm-hmm. during the coldest winter months and do mm-hmm. a lot of writing down there. We chatted and about that off-air, that how it's my favorite place in the world, Palm oh, Beach as yes, well. yes, <laughs> it's very lovely, and, uh, and the, the weather is spectacular. But I just find it very conducive to writing uh, as I walk around by the marina. You know, ideas just just come to me and every time I come back with like a whole new album so I have an album that's coming out I think this fall it's called No Remedy for Love which is a lovely quote by Henry David Thoreau which goes there's no remedy for love but to love more and I saw that up on a church and I thought oh that would make a great song I quickly googled to make sure no one else had it (laughs) they hadn't and it's very much like Leonard Cohen style uh, song and then I have uh, another one called uh, Nothing's as Cruel as Time that opens the album. Um, I have uh, all kinds of, I guess you'd call it folk. I mean, my music still has quite a lot of classical elements, and it's classical mm-hmm. guitar playing. Um, this this is probably my most commercial album that's coming out, The Remedy for Love. I hope you can play at least yeah. <laughs> one on this station. But, uh, you know, bravo for, for this station for, for being a, a classical voice here in Winnipeg and classical music just has such an enriching um, contribution. And I'll just look at what happened with El Sistema, you know, in mm-hmm. Venezuela, how it just transformed and now it's of course all over the world, Canada too, transforms ch- children's lives. And, uh, the gift of introducing kids to classical music at an early age, which I'm sure you have, are doing through this station. I mean, it's... Uh, even if you don't end up being a classical musician, it gives you the appreciation. And, and if you don't get exposed to that, you'll never develop that love for it. 
So I think it's very sad when I hear that music's being taken out of the schools sometimes, and uh, um, it really is so essential. And now they found, of course, that it can change your brain and, and um, enable it just it's a whole empowering, enriching experience to be exposed, and even more so if you play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I've yeah. been been one of the lucky ones for sure yeah no we're, we're we're happy to take that part here in winnipeg and of course you can stream us online hopefully people are streaming us online listening right oh, now and uh hello, and, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be posting the video a little bit later on okay. we're, we're, we're recording the video as well, we'll i'll put tweet it, it if you give me the link oh wow why not <laughs> yeah young at no, heart. i used to have to fix my hair for uh, radio but i guess you have to these days <laughs> that's true <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't have the best shot of me, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, you look well, good. Thank you. Um, you know, really, we could. I could. There's so many more things I would love to chat with you about, um, but I want to play a bit more music too. Okay. Um, I just wanted to remind people tonight. Leona Boyd is uh, playing at Lyric Theater, eight thirty, uh, with Women of Note and with Michael Savona. It's going to be a wonderful performance. I've lined up something now uh, from your uh, uh, Camino Latino album, oh, and nice. this one. I believe uh, he's a, a Greek guitarist from Toronto, Pavlo, who I've met and, and interviewed. And oh, that's right. Yeah, he's a wonderful guy, amazing performer. He's so much I fun. I kind of him put him on the band. map, you know. He was playing in a yeah, restaurant. Tell me. Yes, in uh, on the Danforth. On the Danforth, that's where and, he's, he's uh, got to start. And I took him on tour across Canada. We did uh, almost fifty concerts together. Oh. Yeah, we did. And, so you, uh, you give him a leg up. Yep, mm-hmm. and he's. I think he lives in Tampa. Is it Tampa or Land? Yeah, Tampa. He lives down south yeah, now, Yeah, huh? he left Canada. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, he's a wonderful guitarist. I wrote a lot of the music on that album, but not that one. That's one he wrote for me. Okay, well, let's yeah. have a listen to it. This is a Cafe Castoria. <laughs> album called Camino Latino. Uh, it's a work written for her by the uh, guitarist Pavlo from Toronto called Cafe Castoria. Beautiful album. There's a lot of great musicians on that one. Strunz and Farah, Johannes Lindstedt, uh, some of the performers on that one. Of course, Leona Boyd, who uh, wrote most of the tunes. And uh, she is in the studio now uh, with me because she's in town tonight. And, you know, as we speak, what I'm doing is I am double checking the time because we're not sure. We're, we're <laughs> looking at each other. Is it 7.30? Is it 8? Is it 8.30? So I'm uh, just going to check it right now. Uh, Leona, I just wanted to uh, say thank you uh, for coming in the studio. Oh, it's, it's a real pleasure. I've been following your career for a long time, and uh, I've just enjoyed your music for so long. Thank you and, so uh, much. I hope people bring their kids, and especially you know young people who could be inspired to to play guitar. Um, one guitar concert by Julian Bream changed my whole life, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. My mother took me when I was 13. Um, and it's sort of picnic scene, right? Uh, I hope we yeah. don't have to bring umbrellas. But <laughs> well, we're supposed to get rain a little bit this afternoon, and then, then it's going to be a beautiful, clear be nice. night. Yes, And wonderful. you know, I'm not a weather forecaster, <laughs> but that's just what I think it's going to be. I hope so. So we got to believe it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> no, this, this, it's a real treat to play in a big outdoor place like that. I mean, I hope the sound is good, of course. You know, we're always at the mercy of the sound, but yeah. I'm sure they have good professionals. It's good sound there. The, yeah. Is it good? It's, it's nice sound. Nice to yeah. hear that. A beautiful It's the park. only thing that makes me nervous these days if the sound isn't good. Because, you know, as a performer, you can't always tell mm-hmm. what's going out. So it's very much oh, how they do it. And, of course, on, on a recorded sound, you can, you know, you can control it so much. And, um, you know, my producer knows exactly how to mic my guitar and how to make my voice sound the best and we're, we're going to use uh, some tracks just because I don't have a whole band traveling mm-hmm. with me and with the tracks you can get some effects that a band can't really do so but there's a lot of live playing on, on the new album of which I'm previewing quite a few songs mm-hmm. and f- also from the return to Canada with love you now other than if I brought a whole symphony with me <laughs> I next time that <laughs> but uh, yeah. you never know I, I played uh, here with symphony and with um was the Winnipeg Chamber Orchestra? Manitoba many Chamber years Orchestra. Ago. Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. Many years yes, ago. Yes, that's right. I remember, remember? Nicola Schaefer, a friend of mine, mentioned oh, that. Yeah. She said that yeah. might have been the last time she was here. Was when with the Manitoba uh, Chamber Orchestra. No, I think I came mm. through solo, but it mm-hmm. really has been too long. I came through with a Camino Latino tour. I remember that, um, but it, it has been too long. So. <laughs> well, welcome back to Winnipeg, and again, thank welcome you. to our studios, Classic 107. And uh, thank you. What a lovely station you have here, really. And uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. 
It's our pleasure. And playing my music. That's <laughs> <laughs> much appreciated. We will continue to do that. I'm double checking the time. It's tonight, 8.30. 8.30 to 10 o'clock is the showtime. Mm-hmm. Leona Boyd performing with uh, Michael Savona and the Women of Note Choir, local choir, um, at the Lyric Theater in Assiniboine Park. It's absolutely free. So, I mean, the price is right. Yes. And it's going to be a wonderful <laughs> oh, evening. Oh, I'll be meeting people afterwards. We're bringing CDs. Oh, okay, perfect. I'll be signing. Um, unfortunately, I didn't bring any of the T-shirts. So it might just didn't fit in my <laughs> suitcase <laughs> um, but uh, or books. But I have a uh, website, classicalguitar.com or leonaboyd.com. You can get all that uh, paraphernalia if you want <laughs> and all the old albums. And also everything's also available these days on iTunes, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah, so I look forward to meeting people. That'd Absolutely, great. you can come and see the performance and then get something signed afterwards. I'm going to uh, wrap up with uh, something, uh, another sort of Spanish-themed work uh, by Albanese. I'm going to play you a work called Granada. Here is Leona Boyd. Ah, I love that piece. Mm-hmm. 